Let's create a GUI scripting automation process file with Process Runner. Here in this Excel spreadsheet, I have a list of bank keys that I need to delete for several vendors. I want to utilize Process Runner's Seek and Find feature of its GUI scripting technology to be able to search for these particular bank keys and then delete them from SAP. I'm going to bring up SAP here and just show you why I'm going to utilize the GUI scripting technology as opposed to the transaction technology of Process Runner. I'm just going to type in XK03 here. And now we'll just display this vendor details. So here I have the list of bank keys for this vendor, and I'll be deleting these two particular bank keys. But here in this SAP view, I don't have any way to select which particular bank key to search for. There isn't an item number. There isn't really any specific field that I can designate when creating an automation script with the transaction technology to always tell Process Runner where to search for the value. This will become more clear as I create the GUI script. And now I'm going to minimize Excel and go to Process Runner. Now before we get started, let's make sure that GUI scripting is enabled in our SAP system. In order to do that, here in Customize Local Layout, if script recording and playback is grayed out, it means that you do not have your GUI scripting enabled. Now, if you need assistance with getting your GUI scripting enabled, you can go to the Help ribbon in Process Runner. And then click on Contents. And from this menu on the left, select SAP GUI. And then the first title, click How to Enable Scripting in SAP. And here is a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to enable GUI scripting. Now you may find that you need permission from your SAP security team in order to be able to walk through these steps. Now I'm going to go back to the start menu of Process Runner and we'll get started creating the script. Now I'm going to select the new GUI scripting technology. Here from this pop-up, I now enter the T code for the automation script I wish to create. This will be XK02, change vendor. Now what's different from the transaction technology, here I can actually select the SAP GUI session that I would like to utilize. So if I push this button, refresh, get GUI session, it will bring up an open session of SAP that I have minimized on my desktop. Now as a best practice, we recommend start and use new SAP GUI session especially if you're just getting started utilizing GUI scripting technology. Once you become more familiar with it and how it operates, you may then want to utilize your open SAP sessions. Now I'm going to click Start Recording. Now I log into any SAP system across my SAP landscape, so I'll probably be starting out in my sandbox or quality environment. Enter the username and password. And now I'm going to get the SAP GUI. Here I can begin to enter the data for changing the vendor. I'm going to bring up my Excel spreadsheet in the background. Makes it nice and easy to see my data. I'll input the vendor account number, the company code, and now I'm going to check payment transactions. And then I'll hit enter. Now from here, I'm just going to select one of the bank keys and I'm going to click Delete Bank Detail. Now that this particular bank key has been deleted, I'm going to hit Save. Now that the changes have been made, I'm ready to close out the recording process. I'm going to go back to Process Runner and now I'm going to click Stop Recording. So this is a little bit different than our transaction technology. With the transaction technology, when you hit save in SAP, the recording stops on its own. But with the GUI scripting technology, you need to manually end the recording process by clicking on stop as I just showed you. Now here I am in the mapper tab for the GUI scripting technology. 
Again, if you're familiar with our transaction technology, this is where I link the recording that has been created with a data set. And, and the same as the transaction technology, it first creates an internal instance of Excel with one row of data and a template. And so now I need to link this script that I've recorded to the external Excel spreadsheet that I showed you earlier. From the drop down here, I'm going to select Use External Excel File. Then I just need to find that particular file. Now, from here, I just need to complete the mapping process for the external Excel spreadsheet. I have my vendor coming from column A, my company code from column B, and then you'll notice that the other fields I don't have here in the mapping, and that's because I never inputted any of these fields into SAP. I simply selected the row that I wanted to delete. Here on the set focus row, under dynamic skip, I'm going to select find value or suppress field. Now in this pop-up, I need to specify what I would like to find. If there was a particular value, I could hard code that here in this box under find these values. But what I want to do is find the values that are set in my Excel columns. So here I'm going to enter C for column C. D, and then E. So this will do a search based on the country key, bank key, as well as bank account number. Now I also need to tell Process Runner where to find these values from C, D, and E in SAP. So I'm just going to bring up SAP now, and I'll just click Enter. And here I need to just count the columns. So for example, the country key is column one, the bank key is column two, and the bank account number is column three. So here in the column number and grid, I'm just gonna have one, two, and three. C corresponds to column one in SAP, D to column two, and E to column three. And I'll just show you that one more time, one, two, and three. And now I'm going to exit out of here. Now I look at how many rows to search for in the grid. And I'm just going to keep it at the default setting until the first blank value is found in the where to find column is set above. So I'll be searching based on here. Then for my search options, I'm going to select always search from the first row. This is where the search will begin each time. And then these advanced settings, I'm just going to leave their defaults. Now I'm going to click OK. The next thing that I need to do is I need to set up a loop as I have multiple items for each of these vendors. So here at the screen level, I'm going to select Start Loop. And then I just need to cut this end loop here. So I'm just doing a little cutting and pasting here. This just asks if I want to paste it after the current row. I'm going to say no. And the reason is because I want my looping to end before the save. This coding here, there you can see that BTN and 11, that's the coding for save. Now from here, I need to set my block value. I'm just going to stick with the default setting on value, ignore blank. And so this will analyze column A. So the looping will start when a value is encountered. It will ignore the blanks, and then when it encounters a value again, it will stop the looping process. This will allow me to loop for each of these vendor account numbers, enabling me to delete multiple bank keys for each vendor. Now that I'm ready to run this, I'm just going to go back to my Excel spreadsheet, and here I'm going to change this first row. I'm going to put this at the bank account number 5553. And that's because when I first recorded the transaction, I've actually already deleted the 5551 account number. So I'm just going to delete this row here. Now back to Process Runner. I'm going to go to the Home tab. Here I set my start row and my end row. 
only limited by Excel, which has a million and 20 some thousand row limit. So I can essentially make this as high a number as I want. I'm gonna push the run button here and execute this. But before I do that, I just get this prompting that I need to save the script file that I've created. So I'm just gonna save this to my local hard drive. And then I get this pop up here. You must run this file in direct execute mode because find value or suppress field is used in the mapper. So I'm just gonna click yes here and then process runner will automatically execute this in the direct mode. Now you can see I'm prompted to select from an SAP GUI session. And so as a best practice, I'm gonna select start and use new SAP GUI session, then just check them. Now I'm gonna hit select here log into SAP, and now I'm gonna bring up the SAP GUI, and we'll actually be able to watch it in process as it deletes these various bank keys. This is running in real time, so I could stop this if I needed to, and then I could input in some data and then continue the process. There we're showing that the changes have been made. Now let's just go into XK03 and take a look at this first vendor. Let's just verify if that bank account number has been removed. And there you can see it did a search based on the bank country key, bank key, and bank account number, and then deleted that bank key. Now let's also just take a look at the second one here Let's see if we have the bank account number ending in 5555. And there you can see that it did do a seek and find, removed the accounts 5554 and 5556, and left the 5555. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like more assistance with utilizing our GUI scripting technology, you can go to our help ribbon, and from here, you'll have direct access to the Inawera Process Runner help website, where you can access more information on recording with our GUI scripting technology.